So you're considering making a move to Florida? Well, there's some things you're gonna wanna know first. And in today's video, I'll share my experience over the past four years, what they're not telling you before you make that move to Florida and what you can expect if you decide to make that move. Now there's an old saying that says your greatest strength is often your greatest weakness. And if there was a poster child for this in the United States, it would actually be the state of Florida. <laughs> and I say that with um, the most endearing term. As you guys know, we moved here four years ago. If you're new to the channel, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group. And we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. We help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area and in Sarasota. And one of the things that I love to do is not only share the good stuff, right? The sunshine, the beaches, the outdoor, the food and the dining, but we also, we will share the things that we don't necessarily love about an area. And today we really want to open up some of those things that we have been challenged with over the last four years that have made us, you know, did it make us reconsider? I don't know that we're that far, but there are definitely some things that you need to know before you make that move. So we really wanna get into those today. You know, with Florida having this great migration over the last three years, I mean, last year alone in 2022, over 320,000 new residents moved to the state of Florida. I mean, that's mind blowing. And obviously states are gonna feel some challenges when it comes to that. So we wanna talk about some of those, but we also wanna talk about some of the things that you may be surprised by coming from different areas, because as you guys may or may not know, you know, a majority of our clients come to us from out of state. We service almost 90% of our businesses from relocation, which is incredible. So we're grateful that you continue to reach out and trust us with that opportunity. But what we really wanna do is be a great resource to you and help you understand so you you can make a great um, judgment call and decide whether the Tampa Bay area is for you and your family. So we're going to get into that. Let's get right into this list. So the first one I want to talk about was an eye opener to us because as we relocated from Michigan, we're northerners, we don't know any better on certain things, is the amount of creatures that you have in the state of Florida here. And you know, if you live out west or you live in the south, these things are not new to you. But me being from the north, my wife and my kids, we were not used to these things. We had a frost every year. We didn't have to deal with a lot of creatures, so to speak. Yes, we have our own bugs, we have our own spiders. All that stuff is normal, just like you do. However, what we weren't prepared for is the subtleties, if you will, about Florida. And some of those were very unique, one of them being the lizards. And our kids have named these things. They call them Louis, and they got that from their grandfather and their, their mother, because you know my, um, my father-in-law has been living in the state for over 25 years, and my wife has been coming down here forever. So they name these things when they're kids. I don't actually know what these things are called, but they're everywhere. And so much so, when you're going for a walk or you're on, on a run, you actually have to pay attention to where you're stepping, because we've had the unfortunate events, incident of running and stepping on one of these things before, and it is not fun. And I know, y'all, like, listen, this video is not intended to be all sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, right? So just bear with me, because I want to share the truth, okay? Yeah. The other thing is geckos. Now, the geckos are actually pretty cool, you know, both of these lizards, they enjoy the creepy crawlies, right? They're the ones snacking on those, so I'm not mad at them, but you do have to be mindful. The garage at night, when you flip the lights on, you can see a, a gecko run across the ground and it kind of freaks you out, but you do get used to it over time. They don't bite, they're, they don't cause damage to our property, and actually they're really good because they keep the bugs limited, but if you're not used to seeing them and you open the door and all of a sudden something scatters in front of you, it can scare you a little bit, so it's something to be mindful of, okay? That's one thing. Another thing is snakes. Now, we've been here for four years, we have seen one snake in our yard in that entire time. So that's pretty good as far as I'm considered because in Michigan, we had gardener snakes. I would see them far more common than that. Um, and you know, they weren't harmful and we haven't ever been challenged by a snake here. The things that we don't like um, are the red ants, right? You got fire ants here. Um, my son did step on a pile of fire ants one time and they lit his butt up. It was an experience. I've never stepped on them. I don't walk outside without shoes if I don't have to because I don't want to step on any creepy crawlies, right? These 
these are things to be aware of. The mosquitoes here, especially in the Tampa Bay area, I actually think they're way better than they were up north, okay? But I do recognize that if I'm gonna go trudging along in a, in a, a damp, dark area, you know, that's covered with woods, I'm probably gonna walk into some mosquitoes. But the bigger, I think the, well, I'll say bigger because they're much smaller, but I think the, the thing you actually need to look out for is what they call noceums. And these are tiny little bugs and they're so hard to see. That's why they call them noceums. Um, but those little suckers hurt. So be mindful of them. Those are a problem. The palmetto bugs, if this is your first time to the channel, I've done a whole story on these palmetto bugs. Um, they're roaches, y'all. You know, someone in the South came up with a really cool name for roaches because they're big and they fly. Um, but they they are roaches. I don't care what anybody calls them. Whoever is in charge of that marketing campaign, they did an excellent job because they have people convinced that these bugs that are roaches are called palmetto bugs. They can come in your house. They don't nest there, so it's kind of rare, um, but they are out and about and you will see them. So just be mindful of that. And then last but not least is the gators. This is one we get the phone call most about. People are like, Juan, there's gators. Um, this is what I tell everyone who calls me and is considering moving here. If there is a fresh body of water in the state of Florida, you should assume that it has a gator in it. Do they all have gators in them? No, but is it better for your health and safety if you consider that there is a gator in there? The answer is yes, 100%. Okay, I'm first stroll. Okay, the second thing on our list here is weather. And I gotta be honest with you, we don't mind it as much as I think some people do but I can also see how it just wears on you after time. You know, we're coming into our fifth summer here and you know, this was best described to me by a gentleman who I had never met before. I was over in um, Fort Lauderdale and he knew that we were moving down and he goes, Juan, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I said, no, why? And <laughs> he laughed and I was like, and I knew something was coming, right? And he goes, it's kind of like waking up with a golden retriever four inches from your face every day. And I was like, that doesn't sound fun. That sounds moist, right? And and he laughed and my buddy laughed and, and I laughed. And now after being here for four years, going into our fifth summer, he was right. Um, there is a three month stint, July, August, September, where it's just hot. It's hot all the time. It's unrelenting. Um, the way I describe this is uh, basically at the end of May, the beginning of June, I feel like God walks over and flips a switch and he turns the, the ready bake oven on in your life. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who are young, Ready Bake was this toy where we could make cookies underneath a lamp. It was just an oven. Um, but he flips the switch and it's just hot. It's hot all the time. And it starts at the end of May, um, kicks up in June and July, August, September. We get our rainy season where it's hot and muggy. In the morning, what happens is you've got moisture and you can walk out. I remember the first time I went to the gym at like five o'clock in the morning and I walked out and my car was just absolutely covered in this layer of humidity, right? And it was 83 degrees. The sun's not even anywhere near being out yet and it was warm and muggy. And I was like, man, that's interesting. And what happens during that time of the year is uh, it, this humidity you know, just piles up overnight because it never cools down. It's 83 degrees in the middle of the night. And then the sun comes out and it starts to cook off that humidity and it starts to steam. I heard somebody call it, it's like being in a bag of clams. And I was like, well, that's fair um, because it is very muggy. And what you'll see is people tend to get all of their yard work or things done early in the morning. And then they come back out and at night, you know, when sunset starts to come out and y'all, this is just the reality of it. Now, it doesn't stop me from doing my thing, but you gotta be mindful of it, right? You never leave home without a bottle of water, you're going to sweat just going to your car. If you go to Costco and load up the car, you're going to get sweaty, just get used to it. But here's good news, everyone else is too. Now, for me, I was willing to trade five months of gloom and doom, uh, five months of you know potential snow and, and uh, you know frozen body parts for, for that exchange. I am willing to do that every day of the week. Are you? This is something that you need to take under consideration, but you need to be mindful of it, right? So when it comes to this weather, you know, we've got this really hot time period, but we also have this beautiful, beautiful weather on the other side. And today I woke up, it was 63 degrees, no humidity. I'm recording this, it's almost uh, April here. And we're so excited, you know, for this change in, in weather. You know, we can get in the, in the Gulf of Mexico now, the, the water's heated up, so it's beautiful. The other thing I wanna make sure that we talk about here is hurricanes, right? There's the frequency seems to be coming more and more. Now the state of Florida has been just in, in 
battled with hurricanes over the last few years and they seem like they're becoming more and more frequent you know you can get into you know whether you think global warming's contributing there or not that's not the point of this channel the reality is we're, we're we're being dealt more of an opportunity to deal with them now here in the greater tampa bay area we've been very blessed right last year ian was you know on its path they told us we were going to be hit for like the first time and i think 105 years y'all i've done a whole video on this Tampa has been absolutely blessed with not being um, in the direct path of a hurricane. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm not testing that and I'm not playing a weatherman, but we've been very fortunate about that. But the state of Florida, that's not been the case. And that comes with its own challenges. So make sure that you're taking this under consideration when it comes to weather. And that leads us to our next challenge, which is homeowners insurance and just insurance in general. We're going to cover both homeowners and auto right now. But let's talk about homeowners specifically. Because of the strong tropical storms, the lightning strikes that you have here in the state of Florida, I didn't know that was a thing. It's a thing, y'all. Because of these things, you are challenged with, you know, these homeowners insurance companies having to pay out, you know, more and more damages. And as it becomes more frequent with these hurricanes and stronger, it has really put a wall up on the state. Now, there's been, you know, articles and news stories and everything done about this or done on this subject. And, you know, we've had insurers pull out, I think 13 or 15 insurance companies have pulled out on the state here. And I'm going to be honest with you, our insurance premiums have raised. It wasn't really bad the first two years, but the last two have been, you know, we're getting these bumps. And this is something you have to take in consideration when you're coming to the state of Florida because the cost of ownership here is different now, especially than it was when we moved down, but it's going to be different for you as well because of these hurricane issues. You know, there's basically been a, you know, an Ian tax slapped on everyone and their insurance premiums. You know, we got dropped this year. We didn't do anything. We actually got a new roof. Um, so, you know, take that into consideration, um, but we still got dropped because these insurers are leaving the states and you know why we're talking about roofs you know these insurance companies do not want to take on new policies for roofs that are older than 10 years old and y'all these roofs are supposed to last 10 20 30 some of these even 50 70 years if you get a metal roof or a terracotta roof so this is a challenge now can you get insured the answer is yes but what i'm telling you is there's insurers that are starting to drop you so the state insurance company citizens is the one that's buying up a lot of these policies for you know homes that have older roofs so that's something you need to take in consideration we can get way more into that um, if you want to reach out to us you can ask us specifics about these we can talk about things like taxes and insurance we'll get into more of that um, all my contact information is listed down below but just know don't hesitate to reach out we're here to help you through that process but auto insurance, this is the other thing that we didn't account for. When we moved down, our auto insurance was not higher. This was not a big deal, but we've seen it increase just like everything else. And I know this is happening nationally, so it's not exclusive to Florida, but I would just want you to be aware. Now in the state of Florida, there are more uninsured drivers than there are anywhere else in the United States. And of course, that's gonna raise our premiums. We've shared our, our story with you guys before. The first three years we were here, our vehicles were hit every year. And I don't mean I was in an accident. I mean, my vehicles were hit <laughs> every year. I mean, it was like, what in the world? Last year, we were very fortunate it did not have that happen. But man, it was just unbelievable. And part of that is, you know, not only do we have uninsured drivers, but we have so many new people moving to the state. Like I said before, over 320,000 new people moved to Florida in 2022 alone. And they bring unique driving habits because maybe your state has different driving rules than Florida, vice versa, right? And we do have an elderly population here. And I'm not trying to beat on anybody who, who is a senior. I, I love and respect my seniors, but their insurance rates are higher for a reason, just like young people's insurance rates are higher for a reason, right? Young people typically don't have the experience. They make mistakes. The elderly people, you know, maybe some of their motor skills are not as strong as they used to be. And guys, it affects your insurance rates. So this is something you need to be mindful of. Get your quotes, get an understanding what that's going to look like before you make the move. It may be cheaper for you, but I want to make sure that you're looking into that. Now I want to get into home maintenance because there were definitely some things here we were not aware of. We were just ignorant to, right? We're from the North. We don't have the same challenges that you do in the South, but there are things that we just weren't quite prepared for that we've learned very quickly. Uh, number one, we talked a little bit about roofs, but I'm going to talk about my roof. When we moved down here, our roof was less than 10 years old. It was eight years old when we just had a replacement on it. That's crazy. Okay. Now the previous owner, they probably didn't invest in a very high quality roof, but any roof should last at least 
least 15 years in my mind if it's installed properly, which it was, but that's not what the problem was. The sun is very, very hard on things, okay? Ultraviolet light breaks down petroleum-based products. You know what's petroleum-based? Your roof. If you get an asphalt roof, that's what it is, right? And it went quicker than expected. So we ended up having to put a new roof on the house this past year. Now it's great, we get good insurance rates, but we weren't prepared for that. And a, and a good, you know, uh, architectural shingle roof should last between 20 and 30 years but you should you know in florida we're only seeing these things last between 10 and 15. now there's metal roofs those things wait last way longer and the terracotta roofs they also last longer too but with the storms we have you know you have potential for damage so that's just something to be mindful of the other thing we weren't ready for was the amount of mildew that builds up on concrete concrete is porous again with all the humidity and water that you have on a regular basis what happens is is in that uh, early summertime like i was telling you that uh july the june july august phase you really start to get a buildup of mildew because of this humidity the temperatures and it'll start building up on the concrete and when it's wet y'all it's slimy it's not cool again sharing the good bad and the ugly with you guys today so either invest in a power washer or hire somebody to do it. Our, my recommendation is at least twice a year. We like to get it done um, at the end of that, um, I'm sorry, at the beginning of that season and at the end of that season. That way we don't have to worry about, you know, falling on our driveway or anything crazy like that. Now, listen, it's not crazy like that on all pieces of concrete, but if you have a Northern um, exposure, you know, driveway, it's hiding from the sun. That's where those things can tend to build up where your downspouts pour off the roof onto your driveway or a sidewalk that could potentially be an issue. And then your pool decks are an obvious place for that to happen as well. So just be mindful of that that's something you want to keep track of. Those are things we, we make love to take note of your AC. Um, you definitely want to make sure that that is um, maintained on a more regular basis because it, especially if you're coming some somewhere from the north um, your air conditioner only runs for a few months out of the year here it runs constantly there's only a couple months when we don't use it we're able to open up the windows and that's great um, but it runs a lot and they're bigger units and they can back up with mildew and mold in the lines so what you'll typically do is have them come out and service it clean it we recommend at least twice a year we change our filters every month which is very aggressive you know i i know people up north that they would not change their filter for a year so like make sure you're doing that we just want to make sure you walk you through some of the some of the maintenance there is more to it but i think those are the important ones to know the next one on our list here is traffic now I talk about this in almost every video and coming from Metro Detroit, we had a significant amount of traffic. We're the Motor City, y'all. So I was used to that. But what I I'm aware of is not everybody experiences that. And also New York and Los Angeles and Chicago, they have way worse traffic than Tampa where I live. But traffic has grown substantially. Again, all of these new residents coming to the state, they continue to migrate here and it's put a stress on the system. Tampa is an older city, right? And our infrastructure, like a lot of places in America, has kind of been left behind and especially has not been designed to handle this surge of 300,000 new residents in just one year coming to the state. The school systems are feeling that bloat as well. You know, you can drive by brand new schools that were designed to have X amount of students in them and they're already beyond capacity as soon as they open and they're having to put these satellite schools outside on the property. They look like these little uh, mobile homes, so to speak. They're like the double wides out there um, just to get through school because they've outgrown those. So we're experiencing some of that stress and the traffic system here is definitely on par with that. Now, why? There's more than just that, right? Um, our traffic lights take a really long time. I swear you can knit a blanket at the traffic lights. Some of these are as long as three minutes while you wait on the traffic patterns to go through, but there's just a tremendous amount of drivers on on the road and depending on where you live this is going to be worse than others um, downtown tampa for us even on a saturday or a sunday i mean you're basically going to come to a crawl at some point now is it hours and hours the answer is no but traffic does not move quickly through the downtown area in my experience unless you're going through extremely early in the morning or extremely late at night so just take that into account again the lights are a little bit longer we've talked about you know um, some of the elderly drivers we have here and just the amount of tourist as well you guys know when you drive to a new area or you're driving in a new place you don't know all the things you tend to look at your map a little bit longer you're not you're insecure about if you're turning the right direction and all that leads to slowdowns and delays so make sure you take that into account i hope you're getting value out of 
today's videos. Let me know which one bothers you the most in the comments down below. And hey, while you're down there, if you're getting any value, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, click that little like bell, um, hit the thumbs up and share this with your friends. Anybody who's considering making a move to Tampa, hopefully this brings them value as well. But let's get into this one. And this one is the one that's been really driving me nuts lately. It's Red Tide. And you know, when we moved down here the first year, when we came looking for homes, there was red tide that year. And y'all, I had no idea what I was in for. I was completely ignorant of it. We came down in September of 2018 looking to start community shopping, right? And we got off the plane, came down to Annie Rocks Beach, and you know, we shared with you guys before, it's just a beautiful area um, in our home beach, and we absolutely love it. And we come up to the beach, and there was nobody there, but I wasn't thinking like that right i was thinking like in tourism mode and falling in love mode i was in this lustful phase of moving to the tampa bay area and get to move close to the beach and i didn't recognize around me that there were very few people in or near the water and i was like well that's strange and it was me and kate and cora when she was a baby we could still hold her in our arms and we come walking to the beach and we could smell like it just smelled bad and we're like man what is going on you know, we didn't know any better. So we went down and, and it wasn't terrible then, but it was present and we and we didn't know. Again, we, didn't, we found out. So we were having dinner on the beach and we we're asking people we're like, hey, where is everybody? Like, you know, we got red tide, it's pretty bad. And I'm like, what's red tide? So they started explaining to us this, it's an algae that lives in the ocean and it feeds off of nitrogen. And what it ends up doing is it feeds off the oxygen in the ocean, um, or I'm sorry, the CO2 in the ocean and it suffocates uh, the, the the marine life and we're like wow that's that's not good right and we didn't know any better you know it is what it is we were in love with the area we decided we were making the move and you know by the time we came down it was gone all right no big deal the next year no red tide okay cool don't know anything about it the following year red tide was really bad and when I mean really bad we didn't go to the beach from uh, May all the way through the end of August because red tide was prevalent basically the entire summer and it was killing fish by the millions of pounds literally they have barges out there where they clean them up you know to keep it all pretty for the tourists that come down here and to take care of the the uh, the environment of course because it's actually dangerous for your health um, now Having said that, we don't run around on the beach when it gets bad, but it's something you have to deal with, right? We live in the on the Gulf Coast, right? And it's just absolutely beautiful here. But again, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. So unfortunately, we have to deal with things like this. The following year, no red tide. This past year, or this year, we've got red tide again. Now, it was in and out pretty quickly so far, um, which is great. It was only there for like literally two or three weeks, and it's gone. Will it be back? It totally could, and it's something we're learning to live with, but it is definitely, it sucks, to be honest with y'all. So, you know, keep that in mind. Now, if you're not a beach baby and that's not important to you, then it won't matter, right? You can be 30 miles off the coast, and you probably won't ever be affected by it. But if you live on the water or you live close to the water, this is something you need to take into account. Red tide, big thumbs down. Next on my list is water. And I'm I'm gonna rail on this because it makes me crazy. <laughs> I came from the Great Lakes State where we had wonderful fresh water, right? Our tap water was great. Water that people used to make food was great. And you come to Florida and it tastes like you're chewing on chalk. You need a reverse osmosis system in your house. You need a, a water softening system. Otherwise you get this hard calcified water that ruins everything in your home. If you have glass in your shower, it will literally ruin the glass in your shower. It sticks and stains your tile. Um, it is really bad. So you have to have these systems in your house um, to manage this. Now those systems do a great job. So I just wanna share that with you. You can overcome this, but the, the regular water, like I don't like drinking water when you go to the restaurants because I know it's going to not be great. The other thing is, like I was telling you about food. I was in the beer business. I love a great beer. You know what it takes to make great beer? Really good water. You know what we don't have in Florida? Really good water. <laughs> you know what it takes to make great pizza? Great bread, great pasta, water. You know what we don't have in Florida? Really good water. So this drives me crazy. Now, can you find some good stuff? The answer is yes, but I wanna prepare you because it's hard on your skin. Your hair is not the same. My wife had to change shampoos and like all kinds of stuff. And it's just something else you gotta deal with when you're moving to Florida. So we wanna make sure you guys are aware. Be ready because the water is not great here. All right, now having said all of that, here's what I want you to know. We, after four years, me and my family, me, Kate, the three kids, we would not trade this for the world. The quality of life that we've experienced here in Florida outweighs 
all of those negatives, okay? Now, we could be challenged with things that we're not prepared for, right? We could have a giant hurricane hit Tampa and it could just take everything from us. But we as a family have decided that the risk, right, and the reward, these things work in our favor. We think that we get way more out of the quality of living. Y'all, there are people walking through my neighborhood every day, elderly, young, families, they're all here enjoying the outdoor lifestyle, enjoying the sunshine, flip-flops, the live and let live state. That is really the approach of Florida here. And all of those pros have handily outweighed all of those cons. Are they challenges? Yes. Do you have challenges where you live? Most likely you do. What I would encourage you to do if you're thinking about making a move to Florida or the Tampa Bay area, first things first, take all these things into account and stack them up versus where you live. Does it make sense for you at this time in your life to make this move? Or is this something that you should consider doing later? That is really gonna be up to you and your family how you approach this. But if you have deeper questions, do not hesitate to put those in the comments below and also reach out to me and my team. I'd be happy to have a deeper conversation. There is even a link to my calendar down below where you can schedule a time we can jump on zoom i can talk about all the challenges but more importantly all the great things that this area has to offer be more than happy to do that we're also going to put two other great videos here um, so you can check out the area and see if it makes sense for you as well and until next time go out and live that tampa life